we're talking today about the need of basic research for sustainable development to make a better world. This denomination of frontier research is not a random one. By this, we don't want to discriminate between basic research or applied research or even technological research, because actually this is one of the new features which we see in the last 20 years. It's, uh, it's just not appropriate to make this uh, difference. I mean, the linear model, which we said you do some basic research, then you do some applied research, then you do the development, is really a, a scheme which uh, doesn't work uh, much more, really, in most cases. And we wanted to make the case uh, using the um, specific structure of the European process that is associated in both, uh, of course, the Commission, but also the Parliament uh, and also the uh, Council. Tonight we had various uh, terms, bottom-up, curiosity-driven, investigator-driven. I'd like to use the word passion-driven. Um, there are certain human beings which will do things simply because they're passionate about it. They play football, they are performing artists, and I'd probably put scientists in the same category, passionate about discovery. Uh, and that, I think, is Im important, that they lead, that the community harnesses that passion uh, for all sorts of solutions that are commonly unexpected at the time the research sets out. My work is on luminescent solar devices and that's trying to make use of the diffuse or the cloudy skies that we have around Ireland and even here in Brussels, trying to make solar more efficient under those conditions. We use that, um, so we use luminescent dyes, laser dyes or quantum dots to try to do that. I suppose in terms of the ERC grant, it's been hugely important, uh, particularly in, in uh, developing my independence as a researcher. So it's allowed the freedom in terms of trying to maybe not just focus on what we've said in the proposal, but sometimes the research draws us down avenues that maybe we hadn't thought of initially. There's this wonderful concept of the usefulness of useless knowledge. That is to solve a certain problem. Sometimes you have to take a step to the side. You have to really focus on the fundamentals. We would have never ever you know, had these breakthroughs in the biomedical world if we hadn't first understood DNA and genes. We wouldn't be able to build all the technologies of computers if we not first understood atoms and electrons. So it's very important that we have this ability to make major leaps in our understanding. But the driving force is our curiosity and our imagination. I'm originally a physicist and we've developed a set of tools to manipulate tiny droplets in microfluidic channels. And uh, f since a few years ago, with the support of the ERC, we've been working on applying these tools for biological research. So this is done both for molecular biology, but also for cellular biology and microbiology. And what we're trying to do now is to put the tools in the hands of the final users, the biologists, so that they can be used in different contexts. So where we are today has not at all been in a straight line. The way we reached where we are today has been in a very crooked line and we've had many surprises along the path. So we would have never been able to predict where we are today if, if we would try to predict this 15 years ago. So it was very important for us to, to explore and to try different things and to make mistakes. And it's through the mistakes that we actually discovered the most interesting things in our research. It wouldn't be independent autonomous research if the government ordered only projects. So probably we need both, bottom-up and uh, top-down approach, but bottom-up approach is of utmost value. I'm very happy that we now have research, education and innovation in the same portfolio because I think that uh, is really a pathway to sustainability and kind of policy cohesion between these different actions. Well, it's this wonderful saying that the world has problems, the university has departments. So I think if we really want to solve the major challenges, we have to bring all the disciplines together. And in fact, they happen in a very natural way. You see a kind of life, you see matter, you see information kind of all colliding. And I think it's very important that you know, we're living in this time where essentially anything that we can think of, we can build and make. So if anything is possible, what are we actually going to do? 
And I think it's here where we need the social scientists, the humanists, and I think actually we need the citizens because they have to be part of this process to decide what kind of world we want to live in.